Now, in the process of preparing for today's hearing, I tried to obtain and read every court opinion that has been issued involving MERS in the state of Oregon, and it was a time-consuming process. Uh, there are more court decisions than I have time to discuss, so by necessity, I'll generalize the, what the courts are deciding. Now, these cases arise in a variety of contexts. They arise in homeowner cases brought to enjoin an impending foreclosure. There are cases that come out of bankruptcy court. There are cases brought by homeowners for wrongful foreclosure seeking damages. And there are cases brought by the lenders seeking to evict the homeowner or the former homeowner. Some of these decisions are on temporary restraining orders where the lender does not even appear because the homeowner goes in and says, my foreclosure is going to happen in the next couple of days and a judge will grant an injunction or a temporary restraining order. So some of these decisions are preliminary in nature and they are not final. <coughs> Uh, unfortunately, there have been no Court of Appeals decisions, nor any Supreme Court decisions on these issues. Uh, there is one case presently pending before the Court of Appeals, uh, but that will probably not be decided for at least another six to eight months, possibly more. So what are the issues that are being litigated? The first is, must all assignments be recorded? According to my computation, there have been at least seven different judges here in Oregon who have held that if foreclosure by sale is pursued, all prior unrecorded assignments must be filed. And these include State Court Judge Breithaupt, Columbia County Circuit Judge Grant, and U.S. District Court Judges Hogan, Brown, Panner, and King, and U.S. Bankruptcy Court Judge Alley. In essence, these courts have ruled that non-judicial foreclosures are allowed under Oregon law only when the interest of the beneficiary is clearly documented in a public record. Again, going back to the origins of the statute, we will allow non-judicial foreclosure, but only if the public record clearly indicates who has a right to foreclose on the property. My English is poor, Mr. Chair. Question, Senator Boquist. Uh, just to make sure I understand what you're saying. So what you're saying is, is that if the MERS is fine, but if they decide to foreclose on my piece of property, then they've got to go back and record all those documents. Then they can go forward. Chair Shield, Senator Boquist. That's what you're saying. Uh, that is essentially what the courts are saying: Thanks. is that <clears throat> if all of these assignments are recorded, you have a perfect right to go through the non-judicial process. Right. Okay. But if they're not recorded, you need to go over to the court. So that we go back. Like in my case, they're foreclosing on me, which they're not, just for the public record. <laughs> 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 they would have to go back, record them, and then go forward with the proceedings. That's kind of what the judges are ruling. Chair okay. Shield, Senator Boquist, that's correct. Thanks. Understand. Now, there, like in any court proceeding, there are other decisions on the other side. And before I get there, let me note one thing, and that is that Judge Panner, U.S. District Court Judge Panner, has said that the requirement under Oregon law that all assignments be recorded is sound public policy. In his decision, he talked about the rationale behind making sure that the whole community could identify who owns the property. That is the origins of our property system, and that's the rationale behind allowing a non-judicial foreclosure, but only if the true ownership the beneficial ownership is recorded in the property records. If it's not recorded in the property records, there's no ability of the homeowner or anyone else to identify who truly has the beneficial interest. Now, on the other hand, there's U.S. Magistrate Judge Stewart, who recently issued a decision which is not yet final because she's a magistrate judge. The matter is <coughs> going up to an Article Three U.S. District Court judge. Judge Stewart said that essentially the only assignments that need to be recorded are assignments of the trust deed, differentiating between assignments of the promissory note. She reasoned that under long-standing Oregon law, the <coughs> trust deed follows the note, and whoever holds the note also has power to foreclose the trust deed without ever recording an assignment of the mortgage. Similarly, Josephine County Judge uh, Newman ruled similar to Judge Stewart that assignments of the promissory note don't need to be recorded, that only transfers of the trust deed 
need to be recorded. So I can see a question arising from Senator Bulquist, and unfortunately, I don't have an answer for you on this. No, no, we're hunting geese with number eight shot, I meaning you know, we're just pissing everything off, we don't know an answer. The reality is that <coughs> the courts will eventually come to a resolution of this issue about what needs to be recorded and what doesn't. I, I think it is clear that if there is any assignment of a beneficial interest in the trust deed, that needs to be uh, needs to be recorded to do a non-judicial foreclosure. The next issue that is currently being litigated is whether or not MERS in its own right or as nominee has standing or authority to proceed with foreclosures. As I mentioned, MERS has never owed any money on the promissory note. It acts as a nominee or limited agent on behalf of the true beneficiary. A series of judges, including U.S. District Court Judges Jones, Mossman, Hernandez, and Hogan, Magistrate Judges Papik and Stewart, and State Court Judges Breithop, Wolke, Newman, and Tickpin, have all said that, yes, indeed, MERS has standing and can be a proper beneficiary under Oregon law to initiate foreclosure proceedings. On the other hand, Judge Panner and Circuit Court Judges Grant and Arnold have ruled that because MERS is not the true beneficiary of the trust deed, it does not have authority to pursue foreclosure proceedings. And last but not least, U.S. District Court Judge Aiken said, I'm not going to address this issue until other courts have tried to uh, define what role MERS really plays as a beneficiary, so Judge Aiken in two cases declined to make a ruling on the issue until the case law was further developed and further discovery took place in that case. Two final points. Across the country, a number of county re records offices have asserted that MERS should have paid recording fees for all of the assignments, and some county recording offices are bringing suits to collect monies on what they believe should have been recorded assignments. Similarly, a couple of county recording offices are asserting that MERS should now go back and record all assignments so that everyone in the public can properly follow the ownership records of property in the states. Uh, those, for example, arose in North Carolina and in Massachusetts. I am unaware of any legal actions in our state by county recorder's offices. <coughs> Last but not least, uh, in, on August 9 of this year, Mr. Cleveland Abbey, on behalf of the Oregon Land Title Association, sent a request to the Oregon Law Commission and he requested that the Oregon Law Commission undertake a project to revise and improve the Oregon Trust Deed Act. Uh, whether or not the commission pursues uh, further examination and study of that <coughs> act will in part be dependent upon what this body elects to do either in the next session or maybe in 2013. Uh, that, I know, is a fairly complicated legal summary, but I'm happy to answer your questions if you have any.